Um, so next we're going to go into kind of an exercise of establishing the team and Doug is going to walk through a FERC exercise first and then we'll do a USACE levy example. So let's put what you've just learned to work for us. Okay, so we're going to walk through a, a FERC example here. You are now all ordained as independent consultants. Poof, that's how this happens, right? So we're going to give you a project. I'll just say semi-fictitious project. Uh, the names and numbers have been changed to protect the innocent here, okay? So you you're all have been assigned the task of submitting a, an, an inspection plan for a comprehensive assessment, your very first one, okay? So now you're trying to follow guidance in Chapter 16 of the, of the FERC guidance for this, and you're trying to say, so how, how do I kind of comply with this? What, what do I need to do, right? So let me, let me give you the project first, and then we'll talk through some of this. So we have a 35-foot high homogeneous earth fill embankment uh, that's founded on alluvium and rock, okay? And, and all of this is, is pretty similar to the picture that you see here on the right. So in addition to the embankment section, you've got a gated concrete spillway structure. You've got a concrete OG with a bridge over top and five radial gates. It's got a downstream rock channel. You've got a water retaining powerhouse. You've got two units and a 30 inch diameter outlet pipe associated with that. A little more information, stuff about past performance, minor reservoir de floating debris issue, uh, associated minor seepage observed exiting through the bedrock downstream of the project. Minor rock scour from uh, flood flows and plucking in the spillway channel. No real instrumentation and performance concerns over the life of the project. Other information, basically run a river operations, really no other larger dams upstream from this one. You do have some larger dams downstream, but they're, this is called significantly downstream, okay? Scattered homes and communities downstream from a consequence standpoint. And so looking at past information, past PFMA reports, no category one failure modes to, to stand out. Some questionable radial gate operational issues have been mentioned in the past. Limited design and construction documentations available for the project. The dam does not overtop during the PMF and seismicity is moderate, but there are no outstanding seismic concerns associated with the project. So that's all the information I'm going to give you. Norm, obviously you would hopefully have more information than that on a project, right? that you're looking at trying to put a, a team together, a plan of how would I perform a comprehensive assessment on a project that size, those kinds of components, those kinds of issues. So you're gonna to wanna to know something about the background, the setting, right? All those kinds of things, ongoing dam safety studies that, uh, that might be going on or concerns, issues associated with that. So your, your first task, should you choose to accept it, would be to ask this question first and not the question of, well, so who am I gonna put on this project, right? That, that's the third question. <laughs> you gotta ask a couple other questions first. So what technical disciplines slash expertise do I need to have to actually perform an in-depth review on this project, conduct a site inspection, do a PFMA and a risk analysis? What do I need? So this is now gonna be everyone's participation. So just start one at a time. Give me a technical discipline, not a person, <laughs> that, that you would think would be required to be able to evaluate some of the, the conditions out here at this project. Hydraulics, right? So let, let's start with the hydraulics first. Good, I'll get to structural next. Well, that, that was usually like the last one we normally get to. So he was like really quick on the draw on that one. I wanna get this one in here, right? So <laughs> good. So so hydraulics, right? So we've had some scour issues in the past, right? Being able to go through, going to have to have somebody that has at least some knowledge of that to understand energy. What's the likelihood of that that happening, right? So structural, did I hear right? So you got a lot of structural features, right? You got a water retaining powerhouse. You've got a, a spillway deck. You've got 
a concrete piers on the spillway section, right? You've got at least some seismicity that you're going to have to evaluate. Uh, wing walls downstream, things like that. So I guess we'll have a structural engineer. Okay. A geologist, right? So sitting on rock, you've had seepage coming through the rock. So, I mean, we may have to evaluate uh, piping through the embankment or embankment into the foundation and what do those discontinues look like, as well as for the scour, right? So as much as the hydraulics folks would like to think that they can ha handle all the scour stuff, right? You got to have a geology person to be able to help you with discontinuities, rock mass classification, all of the other kind of stuff, right? So, so we have a token structural and a token geologist in addition to the H and H person, right? Geotech, right? Got an embankment dam. So I'm going to have to evaluate the embankment dam from stability, internal erosion, those, those types of things, right? That's four. Operators, got to understand the operational conditions, right? So you have to have experience in being able to understand, interpret how operations impacts different failure modes, performance of the structure, and things like that, right? Good. Mechanical, they got spillway gates, right? So you might look at the, from the structural standpoint of the gates, but also from the mechanical standpoint. You got hoisting equipment and chains and all that other kind of stuff associated with that. Electrical. Right, good. So, I mean, you've got power supply, controls, you have SCADA systems, operational kinds of things. You're going to want having a, somebody or, or at least experience covered that can handle that, that kind of information, that expertise. That might have an economist, right? Somebody with the economics background, be able to look at that depending on if you feel like this rose to the level of wanting to include that kind of um, expertise, you know, on the team. That, that would definitely be someone to consider. One more comes to my mind anyway. The consequences, right? So somebody that has that consequence expertise. So that'll be something. Hard. Facil yep. Risk facilitator, PFMA facilitator. Good. Going to have to have that with the L2RA, right? I think there's at least one more that is on my list. Pardon? Seismic, you're going, to have somebody, you're going to have to have some type of seismic understanding, right? On being able to look at the loads, you know, probabilistic seismic hazard analysis, or at least be able to interpret what, what's going on. Still one more. Pardon? Note taker, yep, that's good. Need to have somebody be able to take notes, good. Yeah, right. So you want to have somebody that can at least interpret that. You have some experience in being able to do that. I think you got all but one right now. So this was good. I didn't hear hydrology. I heard hydraulics, but hydrology, right? So it doesn't, doesn't you know, doesn't, um, the PMF doesn't uh, overtop the dam, but however, we still have to develop a hydrologic hazard curve, right? We're going to have to have some hydrology people. So. So you might come up with a list that looks something like this, and I think you got them all. Did we miss anybody? I think we got them. Yeah, we, so we talked about instrumentation. That was, that was offered up. So, so that means we need, with all these different technical disciplines, we need 13 people, right? No. No, we'll get to that, because we still have another question to ask us, ourselves. So the next question is, so, so what level of expertise do we need for each one of these technical disciplines? Do each one of these rise to the level of needing somebody with kind of top of the line experience, you know, that has 45 or 50 years of experience in every single one of these areas? Is that what would be required on this project, right? So, so you have to ask yourself that, that, that question. You know, I'll just say, at least within the FERC inventory, I mean, you know, we have very small dams and we have Oroville, right? So there's a whole scale of projects that, that range in between that, right? Maybe the Orovilles of the world, you know, like for a geotech, you want somebody that is pretty high up in, in experience, right? You've got a 770 foot high embankment that sits upstream of a highly populated area. 
in a, a moderately seismic area. You're going to want somebody that understands heads and, I mean, really can, can understand that. Maybe a 35-foot high embankment somewhere in the middle of the country, maybe you don't need something, somebody like that. So you're going to go through the expertise, the, the disciplines, and then decide, so what level of expertise do I need? And it, it might just be something as easy as something qualitative. And you can come up with your own definitions of whatever high, moderate, or low, you know, might be to be able to suit you. To be able to say, hey, I think, you know, in this, on this particular project, you know, none of them rise to a high level, perhaps. And, and maybe, you know, again, depending on what the issues are, things like that, some of these might be moderate, some of these might be low. So once you've gone through that kind of process of going through, now you can start trying to decide, so, so how can I match this up with the people either in my firm or that I have availability to, to pull a team together to be able to put a proposal in to a licensee that says, hey, I can be effective and efficient at performing this work. So here's one way that you might look at this, okay? So we heard about the risk facilitator. So that's M.E. Talkie. We found M.E. Talkie, you know, he, they work for, you know, the company, right? Okay. Andrew Beavers, great independent consultant has background in geotechnical, geology, seismology, operations, and instrumentation at, at a sufficient level of expertise in each one of those to be able to handle all the anticipated conditions on the project. Susan Waters, H&H &H subject matter expert, she's gonna handle hydrology, hydraulics, and consequences. And I will say, so each individual that you list, li list here and you're gonna provide a resume for, has to be able to demonstrate that they have that sufficient experience in each one of these areas. So if Andrew Beavers is gonna be considered somebody that's gonna look at the geology and there's nothing in their resume that talks about their experience and foundations in geology, it's probably gonna come back to you. So you just because you know, this, they might have that experience, but it's gotta come back to be able to demonstrate that experience, okay? Larry Steele, structural engineer. Uh, and we know most structures can only handle one kind of thing anyway, so they're not very multidisciplinary, right? So, so now I've offended all the structural engineers in the room. So, <laughs> so that, it just worked out that way, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I see Gates is a mechanical and electrical. On that, they happen to be a subconsultant. You know, the the company just doesn't have somebody necessary with that kind of. Experience, so I went out and found someone, and somebody had mentioned a, a note taker. So absolutely, we have the best in the business. Chris Fastfingers is a recorder note taker. In fact, they're an EIT. You know, they're still trying to kind of learn the ropes, and this would be a great opportunity for them to be able to come in and do this. So with 13 different technical disciplines, you know, you've got, what, six people on here with a, with a note taker to be able to do this. So each project is unique. In, in its characteristics, its kind of features, its complexities, the level of expertise needed. And so you really have to go through to, to build a case for, for what's needed before you decide who is needed, who matches that. And then once you've decided, again, to be able to craft the resumes for the submittals that address each and every one of those. I will say early in this year's process, I think we've seen 25 inspection plans at FERC. Uh, marketing resumes don't go very far on some of these to try to address these kinds of things without having specific information and, and tailoring these to each of the projects to demonstrate that each one of these folks have the requisite experience going forward. Okay, any, any questions on that one before we move on? Okay. All right, so now we'll shift to the levee example. Um, so we have a 12 mile long, 19 and a half foot tall earthen embankment. Um, the foundation consists of 95 feet of stratified gra sand and gravel. And um, the design includes some landside seepage berms. We have four closure structures, floor, four flood walls, seven pump stations, and five gravity drain structures. So a lot going on in this system. So a little bit on the project history. The, the system was originally built in 1947. 
Um, in the early 80s, it was improved to handle the 100-year flood um, in order to gain FEMA certification. And then in 93, we had a record flood event, and we actually breached the levee due to under seepage during this event. Um, the valley filled with eight feet of water. Um, they evacuated the area and businesses were closed, and we incurred uh, damages that totaled 200 million, um, but we had zero fatalities. And so this just shows kind of a before and after of the breach and the extent of the, the inundation associated with that. Um, so following the 93 flood, um, the uh, USACE recommended a cost shared feasibility study in 1995. And so the levy district began um, construction of a 500 year level protection system um, to keep up with the, the growing economic demands. Um, so in 97, FEMA recertified um, once the repairs were complete. And then in 2000, a feasibility study was completed. Um, and this was cost shared between the, the USACE district and the levy district. Um, some other key kind of background, um, they did a screening level risk assessment in 2018 with the levy screening tool. Um, and it identified overtopping, foundation seepage and piping, um, seepage and piping and embankment erosion as primary risk drivers um, and concluded that it was an LSAC-4. Um, the consequences are driven really by a transient population um, due to the large commercial and, and retail uh, base in the system. So basically the population is there during the day, during normal business hours, and then um, goes home at night. Um, so key uncertainties. We don't have a whole lot of performance data. Um, we don't have any really major flood events since the 2000 improvements um, and no real lab data to, to help characterize the foundation sands. So kind of similar to the FERC example, what technical disciplines um, do we need for an SQRA for this project? I'm going to go back to of that first summary page. Just looking at the project features and hydrologists, okay, good, got that one up front. Hydraulics and consequences, okay. Geotech, somebody say something over here. Economics, okay. Structural. What was it? Geologists. Great. Yeah, we know we got some pretty uh, significant sands and gravels in the foundation to, to deal with. What else? Did we mention? I was going to say mechanical and electrical. Good. I think, I think you guys got it covered. Go. Yeah, other than, you know, our, our risk facilitator. Our note taker, those those are going to be your your key disciplines that you want input from. So, second question is who needs to participate? Um, in other words, what groups need to be represented for this levy scenario? Does anybody remember from the e-learning module, the cadre? Okay. Sponsor, yeah, in the USACE district, awesome. So um, typically, you know, someone from the USACE Levy Safety Center or um, the Risk Management Center, they will serve that role of facilitation, um, but you also have, you know, contribution from, from your risk cadres in the risk assessments. So this kind of shows, you know, the breakdown of those different groups and, and who, does, who does what. Um, so again, your local USACE district will typically provide your subject matter experts that, um, you know, elicit and weigh in on the, the system response. Um, the local levy district and the USACE district together develop the recommendation. USACE district typically completes the report 
um, with the local, you know, sponsor reviewing the report. And again, you know, the USACE national or regional center representatives will typically facilitate the risk assessment and review the, the final results and report. So this just kind of shows um, our same key players from the FERC example. They're going to be busy, but um, we have Emmy Taki, that's the risk facilitator, um, and they're from the USACE Levy Safety Center. And then we have Andrew Beavers again, and Susan Waters, and Larry Steele. They're all from the, the USACE district office. They're providing our geotech and geology and hydraulics and structural, um, all the different disciplines providing that expertise. And then we have um, John Public and DE Signer and, and Joe Citizen from the Levy District Office. Um, and then our note taker, Chris Fastfingers. Couldn't do it without him. <laughs> 